All right, what's up everybody? Sorry for the hiatus. I'm back again making more MCAT questions. And today is again taken straight from a paper and it says, in a recent finding, which is the paper I read, it was shown that scientists were able to induce a ketoreductase, which is a type of enzyme, to catalyze a reaction other than the one it normally completes. They accomplished this, they as in the scientist, accomplished this by shining blue light on the enzyme's cofactor, which is NADPH. This ultimately allowed the ketoreductase to run the following reaction, and this is the reaction that the ketoreductase can run. Based on this image, what cannot be concluded regarding this reaction? And so there are four answer choices here, and we will go through them because um, I know sometimes it's better not to look at the answer choices, but in this case, we have to go through the answer choices because um, the question is asking us which one is not true, basically, based on this um, image. So with that, let's go to the first answer choice, which says that based on this image, what cannot be concluded about this reaction, and the first answer choice says the reaction product has a lactone functional group. So a lactone functional group, this, first of all, for the MCAT is key. Know every single functional group, even the ones that you don't think will show up, such as a lactone, because a lactone, some of you may not know, but a lactone is a cyclic ester. Okay, and an ester is shown right here. An ester is when you have a carbon chain connected to a carbon that has a double bonded oxygen, and then another oxygen, and then an R group, another R chain. But this is an ester. This group right here is an ester. A cyclic ester, however, is right here. So this is a lactone. Okay, if you have a cyclic ester, that's what a lactone is. Um, and the cool thing about lactones and also esters in general is that they have unique smells. That's just my fun fact that I just wanted to throw in there. But the point is, know all your functional groups. Functional groups are easy points on the MCAT, and more importantly, they are something that, if you don't know, will end up haunting you in the long run. So here is a lactone, and the lactone is present in our product, and therefore it is a valid conclusion that we can make. So A is actually not the right answer in this, because A is definitely true. What about B? B says, um, this is a dehalogenation reaction that is stereoselective. So now we have to evaluate what that means. So first, I want to deal with this part. What does dehalogenation mean? Well, again, on the MCAT, you will run across reactions you don't know. Okay, I guarantee you they may give you a reaction you don't know. But it's not one you don't know. It's one that you can infer about what it, what it does. Because a dehalogenation reaction is something that you might not know, right? That's a reaction you don't know. But you should know halogenation. Because a halogenation reaction will take, I don't, like an alkane, simple alkane chain like this, add a X2. X here is a halogen, right? A halogen. And basically what will happen is you'll add the halogen onto the carbon and you'll end up forming some sort of acid. So a dehalogenation reaction, therefore, you should be able to conclude is the opposite. It, it happens when you remove a halogen. Okay, and so a dehalogenation reaction is basically this reaction at the top except in reverse. Okay, you're going from this halogenated product to no halogenation on the overall chain. And is that what we see here? Oh, I'm sorry. If we wanted to actually look at the reaction, uh, and we go back here, you'll see that this is a dehalogenation reaction because you take the bromine and it's gone. It's removed. So yes, this is a dehalogenation reaction. But you'll notice that there is something we're missing here. But when the thing we're missing is the second part of this statement, which is stereoselective. So the MCAT will do this a lot. Sometimes it'll test multiple concepts in one question. And this, this all answer choice is testing you on knowing what dehalogenation is, and it's also testing you on stereoselectivity. What does stereoselective mean? Stereoselective basically means it favors one stereo isomer over another. Okay, And the example I have is shown on the left-hand side of your uh, screen. And don't let this confuse you. Don't disregard everything in the middle. I just want you to see a stereoselective reaction, which is shown right here. It starts when you go and you have this, and in the end you end up with this. Okay, and what I want you to see is that in this reaction you get 98% of this product. Okay, and in this product you'll see that there are two new stereo centers created here, and those stereo centers are exclusively R, R. Okay, that is a stereoselective reaction because sometimes the stereocenters could have also easily been R, S or S, S or S, R. 
but they were never like that. Instead, you only got one specific type of configuration stereo centers. And for that reason, this is, the, this is a prototypic stereo selective reaction. But now let's look at our reaction. Okay, our reaction, first of all, we did prove that it was a, it was a dehalogenation because the bromine um, is gone, right? The bromine ends up being gone. So that proves that it's dehalogenation. But now, is it stereoselective? Is it stereoselective? And if you look at this reaction, what you see is you start, this squiggly line basically means um, that you, ha you started with a racemic mixture. The squiggly line basically means you started with a mixture that was equal of both stereoisomers. Okay, and the fact that the squiggly line is gone and you have a specific dashed line means that you get a specific a specific stereoisomer. You get a stereoisomer that specifically has something in the back. And because of that, this reaction is stereospecific. Okay, and it's stereospecific because your product only is one stereoisomer. Okay, if you if you knew, some of you know that sometimes you can also have the chain coming out of the page, and you could have easily had another product that had uh, the benzene ring that's attached here, right? The benzene ring coming out of the page, but we don't actually have it like that. Instead, we we don't get this product, and we only get the one where the benzene ring is in the back. And for that reason, this reaction is stereo specific. So the next answer choice we want to analyze is that it says the product is in the R configuration. And remember, we have to see if this is true or not. So you should already be very familiar with um, giving priorities to groups and then um, being able to go from that to the R slash S configuration. And if you don't know how to give priority to groups and how to do R slash S configuration, I have a brief review here, but you, I also want you to check out a video uh, in my description because that's where I learned the R slash S configuration, because this is imperative for the MCAT. You should know how to do this like the back of your hand. But the point is, in R slash S configuration, if you know how to do priority group naming, if you know which priority is to make one, two, three, and four, and if you can make the fourth group facing away from you, that is, you know, you want to assume it goes into the page, then if you go from one to two to three, assuming the fourth group is facing away from you, and you do so in a clockwise direction, notice how this is clockwise, then it is R. It's R. If you go from 1 to 2 to 3 and the fourth group is facing away from you and you're going in a counterclockwise direction, then we're S. Okay, so just remember R is clockwise and S is counterclockwise, assuming you know how to do your priority groups. So now let's refer to our reaction. In our reaction, this squiggly line assumes basically that this stereo center we have is racemic, so we can't really give it a distinct. Um, uh, R or S configuration because we're starting out with equal amounts of both. However, our product, you'll notice, our product, we already showed that it was stereoselective, uh, okay? And because it's stereoselective, we have to now determine if it's an R or S. So assuming you know how to do your priority group naming, so make sure you check out the video in the description if you want to know how to do it. But if you know how to do it, you'll realize that this is the first priority group, okay? You'll also realize that this is the second priority group, this is the third priority group, and this is the fourth priority group. Right? And then if we go from 1 to 2 to 3, if we go from 1 to 2 to 3, you'll notice we are going counterclockwise, right? So counterclockwise might make you think that this is an S configuration, right? But, I know the but is always big, but notice that the fourth group is facing toward us. It's coming out of the page, right? It's facing out of the page. And in our previous example, we basically said if we go from 1 to 2 to 3 counterclockwise, it's S. But that's assuming that the fourth group is inside the page. It's going into the page. But when the fourth group is out of the page and we go from 1 to 2 to 3 counterclockwise, it's actually quite the opposite, right? It would actually be R. Because if the fourth group was in the page and we go from 1 to 2 to 3 and it's counterclockwise, it would be S. But if the fourth group is out of the page, it has to be R. So believe it or not, the product is indeed in the R configuration, and that is a true statement. So C definitely is a conclusion you can make about this image, right? And therefore, C is a correct answer. So it's not the right answer to our question. By the process of elimination, the right answer to our question is D. It's the fact that the product rotates like counterclockwise. So the reason why D is right is because you cannot conclude anything about the direction that this, this compound will rotate like simply based on this image, right? Even though 
it does have stereo center. So let me go over this. So if you refer to this lower left-hand side of diagram, I'm going to show you that compounds with stereo centers do rotate light. I agree with that. And when they rotate light, the light can be rotated clockwise or it can be rotated counterclockwise. And if, they ro if the light rotates clockwise, that's called dextro rotation. Okay. And that I'm going to abbreviate D because D is easier to write than dextro rotation. Similarly, if we're rotating counterclockwise, the light, remember this is the light, that's levo rotation, okay, which I'm going to abbreviate L. All right. However, the relation between dextro and levo has nothing to do with the R slash S, right? We were able to determine that this stereo center was R. But just because it's R does not mean that it has to be D or even L. You cannot know anything about the D or L simply based on the R or S. This is a huge point, and I can't tell you how many people will equate D or L with R or S, but there's nothing between the two. Just because a compound is R does not mean it's going to be D, and just because a compound is S does not mean it's going to be L. Similarly, just because a compound is R does not mean it's going to be L, and similarly, just because a compound is S does not mean it's going to be D. Okay, there's no link between the two. Okay, that's a huge point, and therefore, the answer to this question in this massive, massive, <laughs> you know, it took a break, and that's why I gave such a hard question. But after all this work, we can conclude that the answer to this question is D. Um, and with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and thanks for sticking with me, and I hope it made sense. See you guys in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate it. You want to check out any of my other videos, there's going to be one right here. Another link to one of my videos right here and another video right here. Why not? I'll put one video right over here and last but not least If you want to subscribe to this channel really appreciate it because I'm still an early youtuber trying to get it down But a subscription button should be right over here. So please subscribe Cool. Thanks. See you guys in the next one. Hope you find these videos helpful